Welcome to Wednesday, live right here on the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Sports Grid Network as well. I am Ben Stevens. Tons to get to around the sports landscape on this Wednesday TMA. NFL training camp, all 32 NFL teams are now underway at camp. The offseason is bye-bye. We are on to training camp season with the preseason just over a week away. College football continues to click on. We'll bring you updates from conference media days and the future potentially of an expanded college football playoff. But we start in Major League Baseball and we start with electricity. Not just the Subway Series last night up in Queens at City Field between the Mets and the Yankees, but electricity here on the morning after on the grid as well. Joe Ranieri joins the show right now to help us recap game number one of the two games set in this Subway Series between the New York Yankees and the New York Mets and go around the Major League Baseball diamond as well. JR, pleasure to have you here as always. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here on a uh, on a Wednesday, Ben, and uh, doesn't get any better, I would imagine, in your neck of the woods, right? A little Subway series, oh. and uh, oh yeah, Stanton on EIL, what else is new? Uh, so yeah, got to be exciting time of year by you. A very exciting time, exciting for you as well. Miami picked to win the Coastal in the ACC this year. We'll get to that later on mm-hmm. in the show, but it is exciting here in New York City, near our Midtown Manhattan studios, up in the Bronx and up in Queens. And yesterday, Queens was celebrating from the very start. Well, maybe not the very start, but it was electricity from the very start of the opener of the Subway Series. The Mets win game number one, 6-3, to three, but it was the pinstripes with back-to-back home runs from Aaron Judge, now has 38 this season, and Anthony Rizzo in the top half of the first inning that made it a 2 nothing lead in City, for the Yanks and the Mets then respond with four runs of their own in the home half of the first inning. They never look back and they win the opener of the Subway Series, JR, 6-3 to three over the Yankees. Booked, I will say, as a slight home underdog with Taiwan Walker on the bump yesterday. Yeah, it was uh, the interesting handicap of that game prior, wasn't it, though, Ben? Because we kept mm. hearing about the, uh, the inefficiency uh, offensively of the Mets against left-handers. Uh, You had uh, Montgomery in his first 19 games this season had only given up four extra base hits. I think it was six runs. Yeah, uh, that didn't work out all that well last night uh, for him as I think he gave up four runs and four extra base hits. They only went uh, two and a third innings and then it was the uh, the bullpen parade coming in for uh, the Yanks coming off the heels of, of course, Stanton being shelled now. What a shock that is. I, uh, when you've got Chapman coming in in like the sixth inning, like, I don't know what this team, I don't know what's going on in a matter of a month. Uh, this entire Yankees uh, team is going to look so different than what, uh, what almost set, set all sorts of records in the first half of the season. Yeah. And it will be interesting to see because of course this is trade deadline week. The deadline Mm -hmm. is this upcoming Tuesday, August 2nd. So both of these teams we expect And the two teams from the Big Apple will make some moves ahead of that deadline. And the reason, Joe, that this series, although just a two-game set during the middle of the week, feels big is because we're talking about two of the four best teams in all of Major League Baseball. Quickly, a welcome to our Sports Grid Radio audience here. The opening hour of a Wednesday on the morning after, Sirius XM, Channel 159, all of our terrestrial radio affiliates. I am Ben Stevens. Joe Ranieri is here for the opening part of this opening hour of TMA. In the opening game of a two-game Subway series between the Mets and the Yankees yesterday goes to the home team in Queens, in City Field. The Mets winning 6-3 to over the pinstripes. But the Yankees still maintain the best record in all of baseball, 66-32. The pinstripes booked as some of the co-favorites, one of the two co-favorites right now to win the World Series and the favorites in the American League. The Mets, 60-37 and straight up this year. They are plus 330 to win the National League pennant, the second-best odds behind the Dodgers, and the fourth-best price to win a World Series. And then, Joe, peer at the bottom of that graphic you see on your screen. For this not to be a Subway Series at the end of July, but a Subway Series in late October, early November, in that World Series would be plus 900. Do you think, Joe Ranieri, that's a realistic possibility to see a Subway Series World Series. 
Yeesh. Um, sure, I, I give it, uh, maybe <laughs> those odds might be a little bit lower than what I would uh, say they are, but uh, you can't argue with the success both New York teams have had. I don't know that it would be great for baseball to have the Mets versus uh, the Yankees, especially since the last time uh, Mets fans remember that series happened. Yeah, it didn't, didn't work out all that well for Mets fans there. So I'm just saying I don't know how great that would be, but anything is possible with uh, what we've seen from these two already. Plus, DeGrom on his way back, maybe, yes, in yeah. Syracuse, out of Syracuse. What's going on, Ben? Two of the four best odds right now to win the World Series. Again, the Yankees co-favorites alongside the Dodgers. The American mm -hmm. League is the favored side to win a World Series this year. They have the Yanks. They have the Astros. Two of the three best odds to win that World Series in the American League East. Plus 195 mm -hmm. as a division to win a World Series championship. They might get three teams in the AL postseason we'll continue going around major league baseball up next here on the morning after we'll dive into the nfl big news in tampa bay julio jo jones going to join tom brady and the buccaneers and max goodman will give us a preview of game number two of that subway series tonight in city come back and join us here on the morning after Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like, so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game everybody. live, I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game oh, live, man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. If you had to say, what team is the betting favorite for Juan Soto to end the year on right now, who is that betting favorite across Major League Baseball in your mind? It looks like it's the St. Louis Cardinals. And I think it's because the idea we're getting is it's not just wow us with prospects that nobody other than fans of those specific baseball teams have heard of. We want some guys with some big league reps. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Last year, the Boston Celtics made it to the NBA Finals. Kevin Durant joins the Boston Celtics. What's his legacy? I think it's more relevant from this point here because there are some people who are going, that's going to really matter to, and there are some who think it's nonsensical. I want to know what Kevin Durant thinks about it because according to KD, he didn't see the blowback from the Golden State link-up happening. That's completely caught him by surprise. Only on Sports Grid. Sports professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, it's come. TVG, a staple for betting on racing on television before 2017 and mobile betting, will now be renamed FanDuel Network. And the programming will focus on mainstream sports with a betting eye, looking at the positive nature of all aspects of this. There will be places for horse racing, clearly, but the channel dominated by other sports as well. The racing continues to change the meter upward as they move forward. The programming still requires significant content additions in order to make sense for 24 hours. And get this, the press release talks about the filling of the time with wagering opportunities such as pickleball, Korean football, Chinese basketball. Well. It may not be the most exciting stuff, but you can bet on it.
Around Major League Baseball we go on this Wednesday right here on the morning after. Joe Ranieri is still here on a Wednesday TMA and I am Ben Stevens. So yesterday, Joe, at Camden Yards in Baltimore, the AL Cy Young favorite, Shane McClanahan, the ace for the Tampa Bay Rays, gets the starts. He was pretty good on the bump. However, it's the Orioles storming back late in that game. Three runs plated in the home half of the eighth and the O's win five to three a big win for Baltimore despite a good start from McClanahan yeah you are but it's a- uh, Ben I gotta tell you um I don't know how many people we have to they're talking in our tell. ear Joe I mean we, oh, got, we gotta get the boys in the background of the production staff to click <laughs> off the vmix right now so we can make television that would be great all right Joe good I think you're up We're ready to go to a- yeah, I am. I get, okay. But the good news is we're so used to tuning them out right now. It just goes over the head anyway. Uh, but that's uh, I, I got to tell you, I don't know how many more people we have to tell about this Baltimore Orioles team and how much money um, they are worth here this year. Already, Ben, we talked about it the first half of the season. The Orioles, uh, the most profitable team on the run line, mostly because they're always getting yep. a run and a half Ben, always across the board. They find themselves in a dog spot. And if you have followed this trend and figured out that money line and the run line, Ben, you put those two things together and just keep betting it. Just keep betting it because if you win one, you you might lose the other. But more times than not, Ben, we've been able to win both those bets in games because they end up winning outright. Uh, And they are going to go down, I think, as one of the most profitable teams the market refuses to adjust to during a season and as long as it's available ben we're going to keep we are absolutely going to keep cashing tickets on the baltimore orioles as you absolutely should because baltimore right now is 49 and 48 straight up they have been booked as an underdog here in so many 87 of their games this year 58 and 29 as that run line underdog and joe when you look at their run line record overall it is the best in the bigs as you mentioned, 63 and 34 Ooh. on that run line right now. And the Baltimore Orioles, again, are now one game above 500. They are only three games back from that final spot in the American League wildcard race, currently occupied by those Tampa Bay Rays. But it was another good quality start, Joe, on the other side for Shane McClanahan. Yesterday, the stats seven innings, only two hits allowed, only two earned runs seven strikeouts when he left the game he was in line for another win and because of that his odds continue to grow shorter for that american league cy young award plus 155 now it wasn't a great start for mcclanahan as the all-star starter for the al in that all-star game but still he is the favorite by a pretty considerable margin now at plus 155 to win that al cy young award joe for this second half projection Do you continue to see success from McClanahan and the Rays? Two earned runs or less, I believe, in a franchise record. 13 straight starts. That's what this guy uh, has done. He's given up uh, four hits of less in eight consecutive starts uh, going into this game uh, last night. So now he just keeps rolling. And because it's Tampa and because, let's face it, people in Tampa don't even pay attention uh, to the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, it's it's kind of going unnoticed here, Ben. There's not a lot of fanfare. Yep. We seem to get way more information about, you know, DeGrom's uh, minor league rehab starts in Syracuse than we do anything about what a guy is doing right now that is truly uh, amazing. Yep. He is the definition uh, of a starter. And let's not forget, this team, they, they lost glass now, right? They lost their top end of the rotation. And then, you know, they keep finding these uh, these guys and they keep delivering, and he is nothing short of absolute. If you can figure out a way um, that can get some value in backing him in games, he's at whether it's team totals, first fives, he is a guy you got to look for in the starting rotation when you're betting. The Rays, one of those teams out of the American League East that should certainly factor into that AL playoff picture. Right now, again, occupying that last wild card spot, three games in front of the O's, two and a half, in front of the Cleveland Guardians. The top spot in the American League wildcard picture right now, the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays taking on the Red Birds of St. Louis in Toronto, but it's the Blue Jays, Joe, that are red hot. Toronto has won seven straight 
games in the offense. Oh my goodness. It is red hot for the Blue Jays right now. 10 to 3, the blowout victory over St. Louis yesterday at home. George Springer, a home run. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., a home run. They were booked as a really heavy favorite yesterday, Joe, at minus mm. 220, minus 225. They made good on that and on this seven game win streak. That offense has been sky high for the Blue Jays. Yeah, and listen, there was a lot of anticipation and expectation, shall we uh, say, here for the second half. I mean, we talked about um, their ability to not get hits in uh, with runners in scoring position for such a good offensive team. The pitching hasn't been there. They've lost a ton of close games, one-run games in the first half. You had to figure that was going to regress to the, you know, a little positive regression was coming uh, and they were going, that was all going to even itself out. Now, the good news is they opened up with that uh, that AAA team, the Red Sox, uh, and they were able to handle business. Now they have half a Cardinals team, apparently. Yep. Uh, but again, outside, because in the first half of this game, Ben, it, it was knotted up at three. Uh, yep. Berrios uh, just couldn't seem to hold on. They gave up some runs early, and then... Uh, then the fireworks exploded with uh, with home runs, and they eventually put them away. But uh, that's the problem, and what you got to worry about with Toronto, right, is that they have a hard time doing exactly what they did last night, which was put teams away they should put away, but they did a good job against the Cardinals last night. Toronto has scored at least four runs and all seven wins on this streak. They have scored 68 in total. Yes, 28 of those coming against that triple a ball club in the boston red sox on friday night that joe just mentioned but that's 68 in total it's an average of 9.7 runs per game in this seven game win streak they have gone over in five of those seven so the blue jays now 54 and 43 straight up the third best record in the american league overall and they hold on to that top spot in the american league wild card race plus 750 the odds on the blue jays the third best price to win the al pennant st louis holds on to that final spot in the NL wildcard, 51-47, and 20-1 to 1 to win the National League pennant right now alongside the Philadelphia Phillies, and the Phils trail the Cardinals for that final spot. As Joe mentioned, no Paul Goldschmidt, the NL MVP favorite, no Nolan Arenado on this trip in Canada because of their unvaccinated status and those laws still being in place up in the Great White North as of right now. So as we roll through Major League Baseball, the leaders of both central divisions, the Twins mm. of the AL Central, the Brewers of the NL Central, facing off yesterday. And Urias comes through in the clutch for the Brewers. They walk off. Luis Urias, a walk-off sack fly, also had a solo home run earlier on in the game. And the Brew Crew, Joe, get a 7-6 victory. They now have a three-game lead over those Redbirds in the National League Central. Yeah, starting to come uh, around. Plus, they get Burns uh, today in an afternoon uh, game. So, nice. Uh, but they're going to need some innings there because they did empty the bullpen uh, there last night with Boxberger, uh, Devin Williams, and Hader yep. uh, to get those final outs in the top of the ninth. And then they walked it off with who else? McCutcheon leading things off in that yep. inning. Uh, the guy has been huge for the Brewers here this year. Kind of a forgotten name of the past, but... He's been delivering for him. That Twins bullpen, it's just, it's hot trash. I don't know what else to say about it, Ben. They, uh, yeah. They've they got the bats. That bullpen, ouch. Uh, can't rely on them, can't bet on them here. But I think the Brewers, they're on their way to extending this lead over the next couple of weeks. Minnesota still holds on to a two and a half game lead over Cleveland, plus 110 as the favorites in the division. The White Sox only 15 cents behind at plus 125. The Brew mm. Crew, not just a minus 210 favorite to win the National League Central, the same price, minus 210 with Corbin Burns on the bump Boom. today for some day baseball against Chris Archer and the Twins. Next, we go to the NFL, the top dogs in the league. Julio Jones is a buck. Come back and join us. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. 
your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the Pro Football Doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The early line. Those signs of Bryce Harper coming back earlier than later, not going to be the case at this point. Now, from a Phillies perspective, you want him back as soon as possible, but not at the, hey, I'm going to do some long-term damage to my thumb. It makes sense here to sit back, take it easy. You're still in the wild card race. Would you like him back next week? Sure you would, but he's probably not coming back till mid-August at the earliest at this time, and maybe the Phillies are taking it a little bit slower, a la Mike Trout out for the LA Angels. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. I'm probably going to be one of those, Davis, that's going to take a big stand against Russell Wilson. I don't know. I'm, I'm not totally convinced that he's going to just be who he was in Seattle. And, and I like Trey Lance. I mean, you really sold me last season on Trey Lance. And what do we talk about in fantasy? It's the guy who runs the ball. And if Trey Lance can't throw real well, Davis, this guy's going to be running all over the place. Seven, seven carries. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I'm going over with Rodon tonight. Diamondbacks strike out a lot. I'm going to take a chance. You know what? Yeah, might as well make it uh, all. I'm going all overs. Hopefully I go three and one or better. Carver, I'm with you on Rodon. Even when the, the Dodgers hit him in that start, he gets to a strikeout prop. You know, he's either going to be seven or more. I think we can get not eight, eight, nine in this spot too. I I, I love it. I, you know what? And what we love, Carver, just like Coach James Young. The Sports Grid Network. Tom Brady and Julio down by the schoolyard in Tampa Bay, Florida, as Julio Jones signs a deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the opening day of training camp across the entirety of the National Football League. Football is here, and the regular season is oh so close. The offseason is done, so now it's time to look, Joe Ranieri, at the best of the best in the NFL and what the early start of their season might look like and how that sets up for success potentially in the 2022 campaign. But we start with the news yesterday. Julio Jones is now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer joining Tom Brady in Florida for the Bucs entering 2022. Tom Brady will be 45 at the start of this upcoming 2022 NFL season. Julio Jones is now 33. 10 years in Atlanta, of course, last year with the Tennessee Titans about to embark on his 12th NFL season. Joe, he's not the Julio Jones of 2017 or 2014 or any of that, but what component can he add, in your opinion, to the Buccaneers offense? Well, it, you know, uh, one of the, uh, the most maybe, uh, and I think it's safe to say this and it's fair to say it, the most accomplished wide receiver in the last decade. Uh, I mean, this guy is, the numbers are off the charts, uh, guys. He, he leads the NFL in yak uh, and uh, second in reception since 2011. Uh, when you start mentioning guys like, oh, Jerry Rice and Randy Moss, that's the kind of company he's keeping. And Ben, he's missed seven games in each of the last two seasons. So because of hamstring injuries and COVID issues. So 
Um, yeah, you're right. He's not, uh, I don't think he's done by any stretch. I think he's a li- he's savvy, uh, and he's going into a team that has, oh, some pretty good receivers, uh, coming back, too, there with, uh, uh, let's see, Mike Evans, Godwin's ready to go, uh, they're saying here by week one, Russell Gage, uh, they do, you know, obviously they don't have, uh, Gronkowski anymore as a security blanket, but oh, it's okay, we'll get Julio Jones to come in and be that security blanket for Tom Brady, and yeah, for a guy that can still juke and still get yards after the catch, yeah, how do, how do you defend that if he remains healthy, and that's a big if, but he doesn't have right. to carry them. He doesn't have to be the guy in Tampa, which I think is going to be very interesting to see how this plays out and what defenses do. Exactly. He doesn't have to be the guy. He might be the third receiver on that wide receiver core right now, maybe even fourth, but he's an added component if he can remain healthy because to echo Joe's point, only 10 games played last year for the Titans, only 31 grabs, a little bit over 430 yards, but 11 seasons in the NFL for Julio Jones. Seven of those 11, he has played at least 14 games. So when he has been healthy, in all seven of those seasons, he has played at least 14 games. He has totaled nearly 1,200 receiving yards in each of those seven. The bottom, his second year in the league, 1198. Most were closer to 1,400 receiving yards or 1,500 Mm -hmm. receiving yards. So you at least have to think about him as you see him line up ready to catch a pass from Tom Brady and those Buccaneers Joe will open up the season against the Dallas Cowboys as they did last year and very fun markets all available on the FanDuel Sportsbook as we are now in the preseason portion the training camp portion of the NFL campaign yesterday was a big day as camp opened up across all 32 NFL organizations to see who was on that pup list who had reported to camp who was healthy, who would start off on that physically unable to perform list. And speaking of those bucks, Joe, good news because Chris Godwin, not on the pup list. Mm -hmm. He should be ready to go for most of camp for the preseason and ready for that regular season opener against the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cowboys not favored in that football game, as you can see in just a couple of moments. Because you can bet, Joe, when each team is going to lose that opening game. The Cowboys minus 140 to lose that opening week to that be their first loss coming in week number one but the Broncos in their rematch or at least Russ's rematch against his former team plus 180 so you can see where these odds vary all different ways to approach the start of a new regular season in the National Football League oh absolutely listen I I think that's uh that's a bet we should all make uh like yesterday uh, because I am not uh, buying the Cowboys. I'm on the, uh, the under wins total uh, for the Cowboys uh, this year. I, I think it's going to go terribly wrong, and we're going to be talking about possibly uh, McCarthy being fired somewhere around halfway in the middle of the season, and mm. it's not going to start out well for them. I think the Rams and Bills odds are a pretty interesting coin flip there Very. Uh, in a coin flip game but uh, I do think the Rams are going to have the leg up in that uh, that opening game at uh, at home against the Bills so that would not uh, shock me in the least bit I like Dallas and I like the Bills to be that uh, that uh, two teams that lose right out of the gate here this year So that's the Thursday night opener, the first game of the NFL season in 2022. The Super Bowl champion LA Rams hosting the Super Bowl favorites in the Buffalo Bills. The Rams right now, a one-point home underdog, minus 104 on that money line. So you can think about it as we showed those odds for when that first loss might come in week number one. The Rams to lose to the Bills was minus 115, three cents of difference there to the price for Buffalo as the road favorite on that money line. And we have theatrics all across Mm -hmm. the board. The Thursday night opener, the Sunday night debut of the 2022 NFL regular season. That is the Bucs on the road against the Dallas Cowboys. Tampa, a two and a half Mm -hmm. point road favorite at the moment. The Bucs booked as a favorite in every single game in the regular season a year ago. And then that Monday night opener, Russell Wilson against his former team. Joe, those NFL schedule makers know how to give us some treats to start off Mm -hmm. the NFL season. Monday night up in Seattle. Russ against the Seahawks 
and the 12th man. And the Broncos right now, a five and a half point road favorite. You see that total at 42 and a half. I'm intrigued by maybe taking an under on that opening Monday night game of the year. Not a uh, not a bad way to look. What happened to the 12th man? Like, what, what you're going into Seattle and all of a sudden now, like, uh, you're a fate? Like, uh, don't they play a role? Aren't no? That's true used- law. Okay, never mind. That's yeah. true law yeah. and Geno Smith, Joe. That's what that five and a half <laughs> point spread is. Uh, you know what? Denver is so interesting to me because I really, yeah. there's so much new there. It's kind of hard to look at Russell Wilson and what he's accomplished in Seattle with, you know, with that coaching staff and Pete Carroll and everything else and those players and go, oh, okay, it's just, he's, you know, he's going he's gonna to start off and they're going to be so great right out of back. I don't, I don't know. I do think I'm kind of with you. Uh, I don't know how much, uh, how much scoring we may get in this game here, given the fact that we've got two teams with two new quarterbacks, two new systems. Uh, it might take a little while for them to get going, but I know Denver is going to bring defense. Uh, and if nothing else, uh, Seattle and Pete Carroll, they should uh, have a pretty good idea how that quarterback uh, of the Denver Broncos operates. So uh, yep. under, Ben, is not a bad way to look there uh, in that opening game. The Broncos, the second best scoring defense in the league a season ago, only behind the Buffalo Bills. I am fascinated to see what happens in the Mile High City this year because now it's Nathaniel Hackett a first-time head coach, an offensive mind. Last year, it was Vic Fangio. All defense was all that Denver would do. So it's a change of pace. Slightly skeptical of the Broncos' win total of 9.5. I'll just leave it at that. But the odds makers aren't necessarily, Joe, because you can correlate a win total to more odds on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Denver right now has the best price of going unbeaten in their opening three weeks for Russell Wilson and the Broncos plus 490 with some of the other best teams in the National Football League those other five squads you see the Rams the Bills the Chiefs the Bucks and the Packers the five other best odds outside of Denver Mm -hmm. but those are the five best odds for the five teams in the Super Bowl market obviously led by the Bills then the Bucks then the Chiefs then the Rams and the Packers and we have more fun festivities week number two as you correlate these markets and you can use the odds available for you to look at a win total or a divisional market or these other season specials because the Chiefs and the Chargers Joe that second Thursday night of the year what a divisional duel we have early on between KC and LA and the odds are out for that one the Chiefs near a field goal favorite against the Bolts yeah, it, it's a fascinating list that you put up there with those six teams uh, that uh, yeah. the bookmakers seem to think uh, are going to at least head into week four uh, with being undefeated. What's interesting right. is those top three teams, defense is why they're there, Ben. Those bottom three teams, Chiefs, Bucks, Packers, offense and those quarterbacks is why they are there, right? So I find it interesting while Broncos, Rams, and Bills uh, certainly – Uh, They've got some offense. When I think of those three teams, I think defense can carry those three teams early in the season for sure while the offense gets going. Uh, And those bottom three, it's all going to be about Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Can they carry them? But I don't know that they make it uh, that far because that Chargers-Chiefs game, uh, ouch. Uh, There might be... Oh, I don't know. Uh, There could be some points scored in that game, although the Chargers went all in on making sure that defense was not last in the league in rushing again this year. So, going to be interesting. And we know Patrick Mahomes is not a great starter either in the first half of the season. So, maybe the Bolts might be a way to look. It is an interesting look indeed for some more plus money if you want that on the FanDuel Sportsbook. The Bucs have the easiest schedule by far out of the teams we showed you with the five best odds to win a Super Bowl. Tampa has the seventh easiest schedule. That's thanks to the NFC South with the Falcons and the Panthers based on projected win totals. Joe Ranieri, as always, your expertise across the sports landscape. MLB, NFL, it doesn't matter. You're the best. More TMA up next. Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? Let's see how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full need, circle. Uh, all their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And them. Diamond being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose to maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. Oh, boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. Sports today. The Braves, boy, they just they make all the right moves, don't they? Spencer Strider, he's a reliever. No, never mind. He's a starter. 8,700 tonight for the Atlanta Braves. This guy's going to be pitching in the postseason for sure. I'm just obsessed with Spencer Strider, right? This this eighth inning guy who then comes to being a starting pitcher, and he is just blown away some teams. He did have a bad start against the Washington Nationals his last time out. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Those signs of Bryce Harper coming back earlier than later, not going to be the case at this point. And from a Phillies perspective, you want him back as soon as possible, but not at the, hey, I'm going to do some long-term damage to my thumb. It makes sense here to sit back, take it easy. You're still in the wild card race. Would you like him back next week? Sure you would, but he's probably not coming back till mid-August at the earliest at this time. And maybe the Phillies are taking a little bit slower, a la Mike Trout out for the LA Angels. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. Julio Jones uh, finds a new home after one year in Tennessee, very underwhelming year in Tennessee with the Titans, goes to the Bucks. When they have the weapons that they have, right, with Godwin, he's going to be open, and that's the thing. You get, you get inspired. Like, you see Tom Brady, you see this Tampa Bay team, the legacy, the Super Bowl, like... You're just looking at these guys going, okay, I can make this work. The Sports Grid Network. Back right here on the morning after on Sports Grid live on this Wednesday morning. On this Wednesday, game number two of the Subway Series between the Yankees, the best team in the American League with the best record in all of the bigs against one of the best teams in the National League, the New York Mets. Helping us break it all down is an individual who was at City Field up in Queens last night. Max Goodman joins us here on the morning after covering the pinstripes for Sports Illustrated and Fan Nation, and he brings us that perspective looking back on last night, looking forward to game number two in the second half of this Major League Baseball season for both teams that play their baseball in the Big Apple. Max, thank you so much for joining us here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. So, Max, you mentioned that atmosphere last night at City Field. It felt important, and then we see six runs in the first inning. Two scored by the Yanks in the top half of the first. Back-to-back homers from Aaron Judge and Anthony Rizzo, only to be answered by four runs from the Mets in the home half of the first, leading to a Mets 6-3 victory in the opening game of the Subway Series against the Yankees. What was your main takeaway from game number one? Well, the first thing I learned is not to order food in the media room during the uh, top of the first inning because I missed both of those (laughs) two home runs. Uh, from Aaron Judge and Anthony Rizzo. Definitely a lot of fireworks early on, something in line, as you mentioned, with the skills that both of these two teams have. They hit the ball hard, they leave the ballpark, and they've got some talented pitchers. 
That wasn't the case for the Yankees, though, on Tuesday because Jordan Montgomery scuffled early. And as much as the bullpen really kept them in the game, they were in such a deep hole early on that they weren't able to climb out of it. And now on Wednesday, they've got Domingo Herman on the mound. So one of my big Hmm. takeaways right now leading up to the trade deadline is what are this what is this team going to do with its starting rotation? It was such a such a strength for the Yankees early on. But now, yeah. other than Garrett Cole, and even then, he struggled last year in that wild card game. Who can you really trust down the stretch and in the playoffs when you got to go through teams like the Astros? And if they do get to the promised land in the World Series, you got to face a team, a talented club like the Mets or, or the Braves or whoever else makes it that far, the Dodgers. So right. I think that that's got to be this team's focus over the next six or seven days, whatever it is, leading up to the deadline on Tuesday. And the Yankees will face a very talented starter on the other side today. Game number two of the Subway Series. Max Scherzer gets the start on his birthday for the Amazons. We'll preview game two in just a couple of moments. But as we look at both of these teams, Max, right now two of the four best records in all of Major League Baseball, two of the four best odds to win the World Series. Let's start with the Yankees first. Booked as co-favorites right now alongside the L.A. Dodgers at plus 330 to win that World Series championship. Less than a week away from the deadline, as you mentioned, how do you evaluate New York at the moment? Well, I think the Yankees are an amazing team. They got off to such a historic start here in 2022, but they're finally really facing a a pretty heavy dose of adversity here. Got guys on the injured list. Certain players are are underperforming. The magic of, you know, Matt Carpenter is starting to wear off a little bit. You can go Mm. down that that roster, I think, as I mentioned, the pitching staff is something that needs to be addressed. But other than yeah. Aaron Judge, you lose Giancarlo Stan for a little bit on the injured list. It's just they're facing a really big test here. And and as, as much as they've built quite a cushion in the American League East, and it seems like they're destined for a division title, that's not what this team is trying to accomplish this year. They've They've had right. quite a drought when it comes to Yankees franchise history and, and not winning a championship, not even getting to the World Series. That's the goal here. That's the expectation. So for them to get that far, it seems like they, one, need to make a couple moves and bolster this this great roster that got them to this yeah. point. But the question is, can they can they do it with the guys that they have internally right now? Maybe, maybe so, but a lot of guys would have to step up. And so why not take that risk? go all in right now and and bolster this this roster in the places that need to be addressed so max quickly here as we are within six days of the major league baseball trade deadline trade deadline week right now in mlb who do you expect the yankees to target are there a few names that are on your radar that you think would really help out the pinstripes over this home stretch of the major league baseball season well i think that the the juan soto rumors they're they're enticing and tantalizing and they're going to be talked about for these next six days as much as anybody else. But as I've continued to talk about so far this morning, I think that the starting rotation and, and mm-hmm. the bullpen as well needs to be addressed. And so when you have a player like Luis Castillo, who came into the Bronx just a couple of weeks ago and, and dealt and, and yeah. shined and showed that he's capable of pitching on the biggest stage, he has another year of control. He's a player that's been on the Yankees radar for a while now. Frankie Montas of the A's has that injury history uh, uh, this year, at least. And and the Yankees have been in on him as well. Maybe they find some veteran starters and kind of put a Band-Aid over the, the problems and just have some guys eat up innings, hope that the internal five from their starting staff is is that group that's capable of, of getting it done in October and you're just getting them there and having them rest a little bit over the next few months. But when you have an opportunity to acquire an ace in Luis Castillo and pair him up with Garrett Cole. You look at all the championship teams in recent history and the Nationals who are selling off. Remember what they did in 2019? They had that incredible core of starting pitchers. And we know what the Yankees can do on offense. But after Cole right now, who do you trust to get it done in the playoffs? Nestor Cortez is eclipsing his career high in innings. He's been great so far, but what are you going to see from him going forward? Luis Severino is hurt. Jamison Tyone has struggled a lot over the last couple of months. And Jordan Montgomery has been consistent, but recency bias yesterday, he didn't get it done. So I think that if, right. if Castillo is available, you have a surplus of shortstop prospects. Maybe you include an Oswald Peraza in a deal for him, as well as maybe some pitching prospects. They have some depth there as well. If the price is right, it seems like he's the best fit. But we'll yeah. see. He's going to be targeted by a lot of different contenders. 
Yeah, Luis Castillo, certainly a name to keep an eye on for the New York Yankees. When he was up in the Bronx pitching against the pinstripes just a couple of weeks ago, the Yankees crowd seemed very, very pleased with what they had seen out of Luis Castillo. So Max Goodman is joining us here on the morning after. He covers the New York Yankees for Sports Illustrated. But from what you have seen, Max, throughout this season, not just game number one of the Subway Series about the team that plays their baseball in Queens in the New York Mets, Would you put the Mets on the same tier right now with the Yankees in terms of being a true contender for a World Series title? Well, Tuesday was a statement, right? I mean, the atmosphere was incredible, and they showed up. They scored some runs early against a very consistent starter and got it done late. Edwin Diaz, I haven't watched that much of the Mets, but, man, seeing him come in with the trumpets and and striking out four batters to get his four-out save. I mean, he's been one of the best in the league, and if you don't know about it, now you know if you're in New York, right, and you're a Yankees fan, you haven't watched the Mets too much. So the NL East is a very good division as well. I'm curious how they're going to finish it out with with the Braves, a defending champ that's also going to be there neck and neck all the way until the end. But if Jacob deGrom is healthy and you got Max Scherzer at the top of the rotation, that's, that's really all you need. Those are two Hall of Fame caliber starters and it seems like they're going to make some deals leading up to the deadline as well in terms of offense. Yeah. You bring in Vogelbach, they're into a lot of different sluggers and guys that are going to bolster the middle of their order. And man, you've got Pete Alonso and Starling Marte. I mean, they have a very deep lineup as well. It's just, can they get hot at the right time and get through a very deep NL postseason contending group? Yeah, the Mets now a two-game lead in that National League East over the Atlanta Braves. The Yankees still maintain an 11 and a half game advantage over the Toronto Blue Jays for that top spot in the American League East. One final big picture question here, Max. As we look at the Subway Series now at the end of July, might we see a Subway Series at the end of October and in early November? Do you believe that both of these teams have what it takes to reach a World Series appearance? Well, sure. It's it's definitely possible, right? I mean, I think this series was the first time these two teams have faced off in the regular season when they've both been in first place, or at least this year they've looked as good as they've ever looked when they play against each other leading up to a subway series. And of course they'll play against each other in the Bronx as well later on. But man, I mean, if there was ever a chance other than when they played each other in the world series in 2000, it seems like this is the year for that to happen, but the odds of it happening in my opinion are still very low, you know, They've got to overcome injuries. we got to see what they do in the deadline. So talk to me a week from now, basically. Yeah. And if they get hot at the right time, really any team can can go the distance with the way that the postseason has expanded and, and how there are a lot of really capable teams that no matter what you do in the regular season, it's a blank slate in October. So as much as we've seen great historic performances from the Yankees and, and the Mets are just right, right there as well, the test is what happens right when the regular season ends, the postseason begins, and it's a long road to the very end. So for both of those teams to produce at that same level, get the job done in multiple postseason series and get to that point, it's unlikely, but certainly possible. And it would be great for the city of New York. That's why we feel the electricity right now, because it is a certainly a possibility for the Yanks and the Mets to play each other in a subway series. The pinstripes have 66 wins. The Mets have 60 But those are all regular season numbers. Anything can happen, especially in a six-team playoff in both leagues once we get to October. But first, game number two tonight back at Citi Field. Max Scherzer on the bump for the New York Mets. It is his 38th birthday for Mad Max, and the Mets are booked as a pretty substantial home favorite against the Yankees, who are often booked as a favorite throughout Major League Baseball this year. The Pinstripes have only been an underdog seven times all season long so max as you get ready to watch another max what do you think the yankees approach will be against scherzer tonight they got to take care of business when they have runners in scoring position you look at saturday in baltimore and then last night i don't know the specific number but i think it's an offer with runners in scoring position leaving a ton of runners on base they had a lot of opportunities last night at city field They had the home runs in the first inning, but they just never got the job done when they had guys in scoring position, talented hitters up at the plate and and leaving opportunities on the table. So when you've got Scherzer starting, it's going to make things even tougher 
But this offense has proven that they're able to respond to poor performances, step up on the biggest stage and, and, and flush those poor performances. I mean, they've been arguably the best offense in the league so far this season, a very high octane power filled lineup. So I guess the, the mission is to not get to the ninth inning down by three runs or fewer because you don't <laughs> want to face Diaz again. Uh, but yeah. if the Yankees have a lead late, we'll see what they do in their bullpen too because other than Clay Holmes, who do you trust there as well? There were some very uh, interesting pre-series odds between these two because of that Subway Series atmosphere. We don't often see for a two-game set between two baseball teams in the middle of a Major League Baseball season. For the Mets to win both games, that was plus 230 before this series got underway. Now they're minus 180 with Max Scherzer on the bump tonight for game number two of the Subway Series. We saw nine runs last night. Might we see more offense tonight at City Field? Domingo Herman on one side for the Yankees. And again, Scherzer on the other side for the Mets. Max Goodman. From Sports Illustrated, covering the Yankees and the Jets. Maybe we'll get some thoughts as we get ready for an NFL season as well. Enjoy your time back up in Queens tonight. Should be a great game number two of this Subway Series. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys again soon. Yes, very, very soon. And you see the Northwestern lid over Max's right shoulder. The Wildcats and their head coach, Pat Fitzgerald, at Big Ten Media Days yesterday. Yes, I'm always very excited for college football. We round out our number one of the morning after with a fade the public poll hearing your thoughts on the subway series up next If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The early line. Huh? We're going to have to trade Joe Mixon. Huh? Maybe T. Higgins is going to be up for an extension. We can't <laughs> give that to him. Jamar Chase, everybody loves him. We can't afford him because of our quarterback here. Let's see how Cincinnati has it because they have the future right in the palm of their hand. If they sign their young core to long-term deals when they come up, the Bengals are going to have a good franchise. But good franchise and saying the Bengals usually doesn't go hand in hand. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. It should be no surprise. It should be no shocker to see Ohio State as the favorites to win the Big Ten Conference once again. They did not a season ago going down against Michigan. Minus 200, Kevin, is the strongest odds to win any conference across the entire country. Power or group of five. That is what is expected for Ohio State in 2022 in a run through the Big Ten Conference. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I am willing to put the small, maybe small quarter or half unit on the plus 410 to make the playoffs with Baker at the quarterback. No, I got no problem. You know what the thing is, Kerber? I got no problem with it. The Atlanta Falcons could be the worst team in the league. They're going to be competing with the Bears and Seahawks right there. The New Orleans Saints, they got issues. Like, you know what I mean? So, other than Tampa Bay, this division is for the taking. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. I'm probably going to be one of those, Davis, that's going to take a big stand against Russell Wilson. I don't know. I'm I'm not totally convinced that he's going to just be who he was in Seattle. And and I like Trey Lance. I mean, you really sold me last season on Trey Lance. And what do we talk about in fantasy? 
It's the guy who runs the ball. And if Trey Lance can't throw real well, Davis, this guy's going to be running all over the place. Seven, seven carries. The Sports Grid Network. Routing out our number one the morning after live on this Wednesday right here on Sports Grid. Sirius XM Channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Sports Grid Network as well. I am Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us here on this Wednesday. A focus on the Subway Series because why not build up that excitement and enjoyment and the atmosphere that feels like it's the postseason for MLB even if it is the end of July and right now although it might seem like it's New York bias the Yankees and the Mets are two of the four best teams in the major leagues and the Yankees and the Mets have two of the four best odds to win a World Series so might we see this Subway Series in the regular season with one more two game set due for September up in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium later in October for a World Series matchup that's what we asked you in Fade the Public. So with that Subway Series going on right now, who has a better chance of winning the World Series? I am slightly surprised by the results of our Fade the Public poll at SportsGrid TV on Twitter. Is it the Yankees or the Mets? And maybe it's recency bias based on the opening game and a game victory for the Amazons last night up in City Field, but nearly 57% of our Fade the Public poll say the Mets have the better chance of winning a World Series championship. The Yankees are the co-favorites right now alongside the Dodgers at plus 330. The Mets are plus 750, the fourth best price, but $3 even behind the Astros, who have the third best number at plus 450. Interesting, public. I like that you're screaming LGM and maybe LFGM, which is let's blank go Mets. I lean with the Mets as well. That's because my roommates are huge Mets fans and I watch a lot of Mets baseball throughout the regular season. You know how it goes. All right, our number two of the morning after is up next. Training camp is here in the NFL. More updates around the league and some updates in college football as well. Stay with us on the morning after. 